Hello and welcome to For the Quantum Grammar Shoot Podcast, the only podcast of its kind on the interwebs that I know of. I'm your host, Colin Jason Knight from Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. In this podcast, I will talk about various topics as viewed through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, the wonderful grammar technology brought to the public by Colin David Ivan Wayne Cola Miller in 1988. Now, as I'm driving back and forth between errands, I had a thought. I'd like to talk about choice. Choice as a fact. All right? All the different myriad variations of choice, it all comes down to choice, folks. Contract is by consent. It's by choice. You choose it. It doesn't not... It doesn't not... Stop and correct. It does not matter what situation you are in. You always have a choice. What comes to my mind is a couple years ago there was some kind of delusion that came over most of society in that they thought they had to do this, that, and the third or everybody was going to die from an imagined or well, I, I can't say imagined I won't say imagined that's that's not entirely accurate I would say an over exaggerated because folks you got exaggeration right exaggeration is when you say uh, okay I'm six foot tall and 200 pounds that that's the fact I am okay I'm around 200 pounds I'm six foot tall But if someone were to say, he's massive, that's an exaggeration. And if someone says, he's super huge and massive, now that's an over-exaggeration. So that's what I'm trying to convey here, is that it was over-exaggerated and created more problems than it solved. In any case, some folks who had jobs felt that they they didn't have a choice in getting certain medical procedures done that their employer told them they had to get or otherwise they were going to lose their job. So they felt they were forced into that. They had no choice. Well, there there was a choice. You could have chose not to get the medical procedure and you could have found a different means to create value, generate value for your household. It just takes a little bit more work. It just depends how important you feel it is to have that choice because you made if you stayed at that job and you got that medical procedure that was your choice no one twisted your arm to do that when someone is forced to do something it literally means they took you forcibly maybe two or three people grabbed you held your arms put you in a chair and did the medical procedure that is forcing you that is you not having a choice Now, I guess you could call, legally, you could call um, what happened with those jobs and people getting those medical procedures because they had the impression that they had no choice. You could call that coercion. But there's still a choice, is the point I'm trying to make. Always a choice. Even if you're in a situation maybe... uh, Let's see, what's a good example? Say if you're in a car accident. Um, Accident, that's a funny word, actually. It really is a funny word. Because an accident implies there's no fault. When actually, in every single uh, incident, there is a fault. There is someone at fault who's responsible for what happened. Always is. Whether it's through negligence or whatever. In any case, if you get into a car wreck and you are paralyzed in your car and then they take you to the hospital and anything that happens to you there, even though you can't move, you still have a choice as to how you handle things mentally in your head, in your formatory apparatus. 
kind of goes back to my man Marcus Aurelius and his meditations where he says nothing can harm you unless you let it because mentally is where everything comes from your formatory apparatus your consciousness whatever term you want to use for it everything comes from there and you as the steward he didn't use those words that word I'm using that word as the steward of this consciousness which I know at times it doesn't seem like we are the steward it doesn't seem like we're the captain or the master I definitely would not claim to be a master of my consciousness or my thought process I can claim to be a participant in it but I don't have mastery of these thoughts because a thought can come into my head and I consciously or willfully did not permit that thought to come in. It just came in. Now that's an interesting thing to say because I realize I just created a dichotomy for myself. Now I might be saying I have no choice over the thoughts, some of the thoughts that come into my head. I do have a choice over some, but others I don't. So I guess that's the exception to the rule, folks. When I said you always have a choice, I guess that's one instance where you don't. At least I don't. I can't speak for you. Maybe you are one of these ascendant masters, a great Buddhist or spiritualist, who has indeed created that I, that one, and there is no thought that goes unnoticed or enters into your mind save that you have allowed it to be there I'm not there yet and I know I can guess that many of my listeners and viewers are are not there either matter of fact I personally don't know anyone who has that condition of state personally I don't so we've come across the exception to the rule cool But I think we can all relate to that. But as far as what happens out here, outside of our port of sensation, we always have a choice as to how it affects us, how we deal with it, how we deal with adversity. You know, there's some folks that deal with adversity and think, oh my gosh, the man, he's out to get me. They are going to get us. They are trying to turn us into slaves. We are slaves. We need to get out of it. If you have that type of mentality, if that's the way you're thinking, then that's your life. That's what you create for yourself. It's all psychologically driven. If you adjust your mental attitude slightly into thinking that you are the master of your vessel in this sea of space and no one else is, or a steward of the vessel, then things affect you differently because that's the way you choose to have them affect you. Positive, negative, neutral. The law of three. The trust law. And I use the word law in a fiction sense to convey a point. Because in my correct sentence structure contracts, I do not use the word law nor legal because it's not necessary if you follow and adhere to the three principles the balance of the honor and the grace the possession of peace and neutrality and the maintenance of rule one rule equal that covers everything there really isn't anything else needed as far as laws and legalities in any case it's all a choice Every little thing you do, every little choice you make has an effect on your now space. Every single one. Whether you get up and choose to have coffee or not. You get up and you choose to stretch or not. You choose to be nice and kind to people or not. You get up, get out of bed your feet hit the floor, you walk around the corner of the bed and then you break your pinky toe on the bottom of the bed. 
and you allow that to ruin your entire day because 15 seconds after you're on the floor writhing in pain because your pinky toe just got stubbed and broken, someone calls you, a friend, and then you cuss them out because you're hurting. That's a choice on your part. You've allowed that to affect you because as crazy as it sounds, even pain is a mental construct. I've gone through some things and and this is not, I'm not bragging folks. I've gone through some things that would cause other people to just give up and pass out. I've gone through some pain, physical pain. But then again, there are other things that drive me nuts that I can't, you know, that are, that I can't stand that uh, I choose in a moment of, I guess you could call it weakness, I choose to have them affect me, like the hot and the cold. Now, I did do the Wim Hof method, method for a solid year, and I did do cold showers. I got up to 10 minutes at 42 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, I was able to do that through mental fortitude through choosing to not allow that cold to affect my breathing or you know whole body shaking any of that I was able to do that I'm starting to get back into it now as a matter of fact doing breathing and things like that and as winter's coming up it's great perfect timing because I'm going to start the cold uh, cold showers again but it's all mental and we all have our weaknesses we all have our weak spots and uh, it's all a choice we choose how these external what we would call external things affect us we really do there's always a choice folks no matter what situation you're in you can choose how it affects you and you can also choose how you deal with it on an external level as Gurdjieff would say, you can either be a reaction machine, meaning it's sort of like a knee-jerk reaction where you just, without even thinking, out of habit, you react in a negative condition of state. Or you can react or uh, give Kuliana, as I could say, in a positive performance way, in a constructive way, in a conscious way. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you.